Italian chicken cutlets. Now, Milanese is traditionally in Italy. It's just made with veal, but we're going to make the chicken version. There's a lot of different things you can do with these cutlets. You can serve it over an arugula salad. You can make chicken parmesan with it. You could do something that I'm going to show you at the end of this that uh, is a little different. For now, let's go over all of the ingredients to make Italian chicken cutlets. And yeah, I like to show you all of the ingredients for this, and they're fairly simple. You can do one or two things with the breadcrumbs, and we'll go into that in a bit. But for now, here are, these are full chicken breasts. We're going to fillet them. I'm going to show you how to fillet them. And then here's the three ingredients that you use to make the cutlet. Breadcrumbs. I took a couple day old Italian bread I had. I ran it through a coffee grinder. You can do a food processor. You can also buy ready-made seasoned breadcrumbs, which are totally fine. Here's flour, I have about a cup, cup and a half to start with. And I have four eggs to start with. All of these are subject to change because, you know, it depends on the size of the chicken. Salt, pepper, parsley, and Parmigiano-Reggiano right now. With this, if, if you like a lot of cheese, you're gonna grate more. If you don't like so much, maybe use a little bit less. I love a lot of cheese in these chicken cutlets. You know, it, it's so good. It makes the cutlet, I think, much better. And, you know, if you like Pecorino Romano more, use that cheese. So I have about a half cup right now. I'm gonna put it all in the breadcrumbs. And I'm gonna put a lot of parsley in. I have dried parsley. Dried parsley works particularly well when you're making breadcrumbs, like scratch breadcrumbs, because it's already a dried ingredient as well. One tablespoon, not tablespoon, excuse me, one teaspoon of kosher salt to start. And about a half a teaspoon to three quarter teaspoon of black pepper. And that's kind of like a starting base here. I'm gonna mix these breadcrumbs around very well. I wanna really incorporate the our breading, you know, our seasoning right now, and I want to taste it. I want to make sure that this is really, really good for, for our chicken. So I'm going to use that fork and I'm going to take a bite of the breadcrumbs. And this is a good thing to do. It's always a good thing to do for all your food. So I'm adding more salt and more pepper, probably about another half to one teaspoon of kosher salt and about another half teaspoon of black pepper and more parsley. Okay with the cheese level, so this is just, we want a really, really good coating on the chicken, which is going to give us a ton of flavor. So, you know, take the extra minute to, to do it right. As far as the chicken cutlets go, you know, this is a full breast, really thick, big chicken breast. I'm going to take off any little remnants of fat that are there, which chicken breasts are very, very lean, so they, you know, there's rarely any fat and we're gonna fillet it. So with a very sharp knife and the palm of your hand, carefully, you're gonna cut. Now try to do this into three fillets. And you're gonna get better at this. If you don't wanna do three at the first time, you can do, just cut it straight in half and then you'll have two large ones. And that might be better bef once you get once you get better at it you'll be able to do it fairly, fairly easily you could also take a paper towel under your hand that'll give you more of a grip so it doesn't slide on you but that's a nice thickness and I'm gonna clean up the last you know this the, the last third of it here which you don't even have to do because when we use the mallet it's all gonna make it flat anyway so I'm just speeding up I have four pounds of cutlets so you don't need to see me fillet them all, but you could see me fill, do it in, in really fast motion. Big piece. This is from Costco. I have this like, it's like a 15 or 18 inch, uh, you know, roll of plastic wrap, but anything will be fine. And I'm going to put it on a very heavy duty cutting board, something that's not going to move, which, which is important. So, you know, I'm showing you some of my colors are good, some aren't. I, I, and, you know, like maybe one you don't have to do. I'm just going to do them all, you know, for good measure. So I'm going to take another piece of plastic wrap and put it on top of the cutlet. So we basically are making a sandwich of, of the plastic wrap above and below. And then here's the meat mallet. Not going to use the spike side, just going to use the flat side. And you, as you hit, you kind of like push away and just, you just want to be careful that you don't like put too much pressure and you put a hole in the chicken but even if you do that's okay everybody you know this happens to everybody 
and you just pull the wrap back and really not that much work will give you just an awesome flat thin chicken cutlet to work with that's probably a quarter to three eighths of an inch thick which is just perfect for doing milanese you know just perfect so i'm just going to do them all right back in and normally i can get four or five of these before the plastic wrap rips and then when it does rip i just take another piece and and just and just do it again and here i'm left with about four pounds of chicken cutlets ready to go you want to go flour, egg, breadcrumbs. And then the fourth part is when you get them, you put them right on here. And this will, you, 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 I'm gonna need two or three trays probably, but if you have a big enough surface, you can just put this paper down and just leave them on the side. The other thing is when you put your breadcrumbs and your flour and you put your whole batter on, you can put this in the fridge or even the freezer for 15 minutes and it will stiffen up and it will help the coating stay on better. I don't normally do that. Ideally, you want to crack an egg into a separate bowl and we're just going to take our chances here. Okay, yeah, the exact flour and egg amount is, and even the breadcrumb is not, you'll never be an exact amount. Depending on how thin you got your chicken cutlets, it will, it will vary. Because remember, you can have a pound of chicken cutlets, but if you make it really, really thin, you'll have more surface area. So you'll need more flour, egg, and breadcrumb. So just keep that in mind. What I normally do is keep a couple more eggs than you think you need, just put them on the side, don't crack them all. Same thing with the flour, don't put it all in there. And the breadcrumbs, so these breadcrumbs, remember we mix these up with, with cheese. Cheese has moisture in it. So once you do this, these are, you gotta use these within a couple days. This isn't like something that you're gonna mix up. And, and that's really why I don't recommend making your own breadcrumbs or trying to make your own Italian breadcrumbs because you're gonna run into this. The ones that you buy in a store that have, that, they, that say they have Parmesan Reggiano or Pecorino Romano, they're using dehydrated cheese. It has no moisture in it. If you have any moisture in here, you're gonna mold can form in a matter of a short period of time. So. Keep that in mind too. But I wanted to make the breadcrumbs for this video to show you how it's done. This was just a loaf of Italian bread that I buzzed in the coffee grinder and then mixed in, you know, the four ingredients that you saw me do. I know already I'm probably actually gonna need another egg because I have so much chicken there. I'm gonna put salt and pepper in here. Yeah, if you, if you have three of these or even deeper, the uh, like a bread loaf, uh, pan, that would work even better. Pepper in here. How much flour do I have here? Probably about two cups, but you know, I don't measure with these because you're always, you're always adding more, but you don't, what you don't want to do is take so much that you have a ton of waste at the end. The more you make chicken cutlets, the better you'll get at eyeballing all these, all these amounts. All right. So we got our chicken right here. Flour, egg, breadcrumb, back here. If your chicken is wet still, keep a couple paper towels, give it a, give it a pat. Now remember the flour is gonna take a lot of the wetness out too. Okay, big one. Okay, that's, that's a huge one. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna make the rest of them smaller. That's a little too big for the pan that I'm using. Okay, when you put it in your flour, really shake it off. Get it in the egg. Into the breadcrumb. So a lot of people, a lot of Italian Americans will fry their cutlets just in canola oil. You'll see now, and it's popular for whatever reason on websites and it could be celebrity chefs, they're telling people to fry their cutlets in extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna tell you 100% not to do that, unless you have a ton of money. You need a lot of olive oil here. You're gonna probably, if you do two, three, four pounds, you're gonna have to change your olive oil. You know, you can try to skim, try to get rid of the pieces, 
You're gonna have to add olive oil at a minimum because the chicken's absorbing the oil. This right here, this is oil I use a lot. So sometimes this will be on sale. I got this for $10, okay? It's three liters. That's a really good deal, $10. The place I get it at, that's actually cheaper than Costco will have it, uh, you know, often. So, but you really want to be economical here when you do it. Unless, you you know, if you find out maybe two cutlets, you know, for, for yourself, then maybe do it in extra virgin olive oil. This stuff right here, Frantoya. This stuff is 20 to $40, 20 to $40 for a liter, depending on where you get it. So Amazon has it right now for 30 or $40. Where I can get it, I can get it for either 20 or 25. You're gonna use that to fry, to fry cutlets in? Don't do that, okay? Listen, you can, if you want, use extra virgin olive oil. I just don't really recommend it. I'm doing four or five pounds of cutlets. This is typically what I do. So anyway, about 350 to 375, you want your oil, and you're gonna use the back of that wooden spoon to check. When the bubbles are not super you know, super strong, like right now, that's perfect frying temperature. So my, I was a little overexposed on my first batch, so I, I just moving right on to my second batch for you guys to see. But you can see they're nice and golden right there. So, you know, here's your thing, the oil, you'll get a lot of the crumbs, it'll get in there, you can scoop some out, but this is the whole thing why you're gonna have to add some more oil as you're doing it. And uh, it's all good, they're, they're gonna be great, they look, they look fantastic already. You can see that beautiful golden color on them. They take about three, four minutes max per side. And it's as simple as that. It's just getting them in. When you put them in, make sure you, you know, you put them away from you. You, you don't like, you know, put them in the oil right towards your body. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, but, but maybe not. So uh, sometimes you can just learn the hard way. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, it's just, it, 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 I love doing a ton of these. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do one or two of them. I want to be able to make like two, three different meals with them. Maybe make some sandwiches, chicken cutlet hero, uh, you know, chicken parm, obviously. And I keep them on the wire rack. You could also just use paper towels, which honestly works even better. So you could blot some of the oil off of it. And I don't want to not show you, you know, spend enough time showing you how this is done, but it really is as simple as getting that breading done. You get it done the right way. You could put it in the freezer for 15 minutes to let it solidify. If you have all your breading done, it's as simple as maintaining your oil temperature, taking your time, you know, putting them away from you, and you'll have a perfect cutlet. They took a while because I did a bunch. Let me show you right now. Ooh, can you see all those? And I promised you the best thing to do with these cutlets. I'm going to show you right now. Let's do it. So everybody knows, you know, you take chicken cutlets, you roll a salad, lemon juice, cheese. Everybody knows that, right? You know, you guys know that. You're already watching this video. You probably know that. Let's do something different. Look at this. Broccoli Rob with garlic. Okay, and we're gonna take these cutlets, and you know, by the way, if you saw my sauteed broccoli rob with garlic and oil recipe already, which you know showed this at the end of that one, and now I'm showing you, you know, the opposite for this one. Basically, they're kind of like they go together to both of these recipes, but I didn't want to do them both together in one video because it would have been a 30-minute video. So here's cherry peppers. I'm gonna add it on top of these cutlets, and. You know, cherry peppers and broccoli rabe is one of the best combinations. And when you when you when you put them together and you put put it on top of chicken cutlets, it just makes a great dish. You could honestly stop here. You could put some oil and vinegar on it, or maybe even balsamic vinegar. But I'm not going to do that. Keep that in mind. But I'm going to put fresh mozzarella, not fresh mozzarella, regular mozzarella on here, and I'm just going to get it in the oven for. Uh, a minute or two in the broiler. Feel free to put fresh mozzarella too if you have it. But that's how it looks. And not a lot of work. It's just an awesome dish. I hope you subscribe to this channel. I hope you share this. And I hope to see you next time.